Hi, welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips and in this tutorial we'll be producing a column graph, a simple column graph. So let's start with a blank canvas. And the first thing we'll do is produce the axes. Well actually before we do that, ensure that your zoom is set to one to one by just typing or pressing one or going view zoom one to one. The other thing you might like to do is file document properties and take the tick out of show page border. If you're printing something that's a bad idea but for screen presentations it makes things look a bit cleaner. Okay now if I draw the axes using the Bezier pen tool over here, click, now I'll start with the um, vertical axis, click, hold down control to constrain a vertical line, click, hold down control to constrain a horizontal line, and click enter or I could have double clicked at the end select tool and there is my axis I'd like to put some arrows on that so if I bring up the stroke and fill toolbox control shift F I've already done that and stroke style you can put arrow heads on sometimes that's a bit of trial and error you can put them on they look a bit too big or small if I try that one no, that's way too small uh, perhaps that one, yeah that looks okay and this one, perhaps that one yeah that's not too bad some as they can change if you change the stroke though so if I selected the whole lot and change the stroke style to say 0.5 of a millimetre yeah, that makes the arrow heads a bit too big and you might need to go back and select a smaller one there and the same over here, a smaller one there. Okay, finally got there. Next we'll produce the bars for our bar chart by clicking the squares and rectangles tool. I'm going to you know, just do it by eye till you're happy with it. It doesn't even have to touch the axis. And then click the select tool. Then I'm going to duplicate, control D and drag it, Look, I'll, I'll deliberately be a bit inaccurate here, drag it over to there and control duplicate to do another one, control duplicate, drag another one, control duplicate however many you want. Now one way, alternative way of doing all this was to would have been to produce a grid to snap to or to use as a guide, but I'll show you how you can do a lot of uh, stuff without having to do that. If I select all those rectangles and bring up the align and distribute toolbox, which is control shift A, and then select to align the bottoms of all these, that lines them up. And I might want to evenly distribute them, it doesn't look too bad, but uh, by clicking this button here, that distributes them evenly that I might like to align them while it's selected, shift click that axis and align it to the bottom of that axis. Actually that didn't uh, help because here yeah, it's counting the arrowhead as part of the object and I don't want to line up with the bottom of the arrowhead so control Z and I'll just click away and just check my snapping options up here. You can see if I go snap to paths I think that might help. Now if I group all those and bring them down yeah, it's, it says when it's snapped to the path. Okay. Now we don't want all the bars the same necessarily. Uh, you can just drag them to different heights there. You might want to wait until you've put uh, axis divisions. Whoops. Axis divisions on the vertical axis. But yeah, that's up to you. Uh, I think I will do that now. If I click the, I'll zoom, no, I'll click the Bezier pen tool, then zoom in and control just to drag a little and then click and enter a little marker there. Now if I want them continually spaced, you know, say a centimetre up the axis, I'm going to go to the transform menu, control shift M, M for move, and change the vertical to 
10 millimeters. Click apply. Control Z, you know what I forgot to do. Duplicate first. Control D, then apply. Control D, then apply. Control D, then apply, and so on. I can zoom back in in the middle of all this. Control D, apply. Control D, apply. And there I have my divisions. Let me zoom in a bit more, perhaps. Okay, so I might like to you know, eyeball that to a particular about halfway. Yeah, you know, oops, what was it? You can put in guides if you want to. I'll just do this once. So if you drag from the ruler, click in the ruler up here and drag down. So I want to line up there. Actually I've done it pretty well without the ruler. But uh, I can move that around, say so down to there. And then click on this and move it up you know, to get certain heights. I won't spend too much time on that now, you can do that. Or as I said, you could go view grids and guides. I'll double click that and delete it. Just quickly to show you, I'm not going to use it, but show you how you could do it. You can go view, page grid, and use those as your guides. I'm going to turn that off now, view, page grid and just go and change the colours on some of these. doesn't really matter but um, you can play around with these. If you wanted uh, a different colour or a variation of the colour that's there you can click on fill and you can play around with the you know, luminosity you know, lighten things up or opacity all sorts of things. Now numbers we need on the axis, we do that using the text tool. So if I click and type a zero there, that uh, I'll zoom out and see how that looks. It might be a little bit big I think, but you can either do that by scaling it directly. I'll zoom in so I can scale more accurately. Control, something like that line it up with the, the bottom. Now back to our transform menu. I'll scroll up, here we go. And if we want to move it vertically 10 like we did before, that was already there from the other setting. Control D to duplicate, apply. Oops, missed apply. Control D apply, Control D apply. Just zoom out so I can see when I've done them all. Control D apply, Control D apply. Okay, click away and then change into the values that I want. I can't remember what I had in my opening file but it might be counting in twos. Notice I double clicked on a number and brought up the eye beam and I can just continue dragging over those to alter them to whatever they have to be. 12, 14 say. So click the select tool. There we go. We probably want some headings as well, or some access titles. If I click up here and say 7A's apostrophe S. Now I'm not sure why that's uh, strange. Apostrophe S is giving me a funny symbol there. I'll just get around it this way for now. my heading and I might just control D to duplicate that, drag it down here and just say colour there, select tool, control D, duplicate a vertical axis title, double click and I might put frequency there, click it a second time and hold down control to get a 15 degree increments in the rotation until I've got it vertical. And there we have it. I might like to do a similar thing to label the red, blue, 
green and so forth. I'll just do one quickly. If I click, type say red, and then Control D, move them along. Control D, Control D, move them. We've got one more. Control D. Go back and or oh, this one. Change it to whatever you want. Blue, green. And final one. If I, I'll try and do them all in one hit. Click a second time. Rotate them all to vertical. Drag them over here. Actually, I might uh, turn the other way around. I think would look a bit uh, better. Click a second time. Like that. And then we can line them all up, get this colour out of the way. Red, blue, I'll just eyeball these. I'll align the tops with the spacings, I'll just eyeball. We've got to complete, oops, we've got to completely envelop the selection for them to be in the marquee and selected properly. Back to the Align and Distribute uh, toolbox, I'll align the tops using this icon here. So I can distribute them while I'm at it, horizontally. And there we go. Again, you can play around with the font size and so forth, but there's a, a quick tutorial on how to produce a simple column graph. Thanks for watching.